हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो आई होप यू ऑल आर कीपिंग वेल टुडे इज आवर फर्स्ट क्लास ऑफ केमिस्ट्री एंड वी शैल बी नोइंग समथिंग अबाउट द फर्स्ट यूनिट ऑफ आवर सिलेबस सो लेट स्टार्ट विद इट यू नो वॉट लाइफ वुड हैव बीन मच सिंपलर इफ यू कुड सी द एटम्स फ्लोटिंग एंड मेकिंग बॉन्स विद द अदर एटम्स टू फॉर्म मॉलिक्यूल्स राइट इज इंट इट एंड वी वुड देन बी एबल टू प्रूव वॉट अ बॉन्ड वॉज एंड वॉट एंड हाउ डज इट लुक लाइक एंड हेंस इन दैट वर्ल्ड वुड नॉट नीड थियरीज टू प्रूव फॉर अस like for example you can see here the two molecules they are making bond with one another okay so uh, it would have been so simpler if we could see the atoms and the molecules existing and making bonds with each other isn't it so so but well that's not so simple as we see so chemistry is all about that and uh, there are various theories which explain the electronic structures and the shapes of known molecules and also the attempt to predict the shape of molecules whose structures are so far known to us like for example a few of the structures which we can see over here on the screen you see there are different types of beautiful structures with beautiful geometry the bond angles are also shown here so there are many theories which have given uh, birth to all these structures explaining how and uh, what actually chemical bonding involves the lewis theory was the first explanation of a covalent bond in terms of electrons that was generally accepted during that era it says that if the electrons are shared between the atoms then it constitutes a bond between those atoms which are sharing the electrons okay and for many lighter atoms a stable arrangement is attained when the atom is surrounded by eight electrons that is the octet now this octet can be made up from uh, some electrons that are totally owned by an atom and some electrons that are shared by an atom or a group of atoms of course there are exceptions to the octet rule like beryllium fluoride bef2 bf3 no pf3 pf5 and so on and so forth as well there are the list goes on wherein the octet is not followed by the molecules so however the lewis theory theory could explain the bond formation between the respective uh, atoms to form the molecule but unfortunately this theory could not give any indication of the shape that is adopted by the molecules right so we can say that somewhere or the other when we come to a point this theory was not workable for the molecules in majority so what happened after this in 1940 sidwick and powell they showed that for molecules as well as the ions that only contains the single bonds the approximate shape can be predicted from the number of electron pairs in the outer or let's say the valence shell of the central atom so accordingly the outer shell contains one or more bond pairs of electrons but it may also contain the unshared pair of electrons or the unbonded pair of electrons which we call as the lone pair of electrons okay now the unfortunate uh, uh, part of this theory was that uh, although it could explain much of the uh, molecules according to it um, but actually they took the bond pairs as well as the lone pairs of electrons as equivalent so according to them the bonded pair of electrons were just like of a similar nature or like that of the lone pair of electrons there was no difference between the two according to their theory and this ultimately 
could not explain the existence of many of the molecules that existed in nature and there how it was it was followed that this theory could not be adopted for further future use then in 1957 gillespie and nyholm they improved and redefined the sigwick and powell theory so as to predict and give suitable explanation of the molecular shapes and the bond angles more exactly and that theory came into being to be called as valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or the vscpr theory right precisely given by the gillespie and nyholm okay actually it was the refined version of the sigwick and powell theory we should say okay now uh, the nyholm and gillespie actually defined the vscpr model as i just mentioned by explaining the important differences between the lone pairs of electrons and the bonded pair of electrons right so while the lone pairs are localized on the central atom each bonded pair is shared between the two atoms so actually what is the situation according to them that the lone pair of electrons they are centralized around the central atom but the story with the bonded pair of electron is a bit different so this is uh, the main crucial point wherein this theory differs from the sigwick and powell theory why because sigwick and powell they said that the bonded pair and the lone pair of electrons they are equal equivalent to each other almost equivalent to each other but the vscpr theory says no that is not the case the bonded pair of electrons actually they lie somewhere in between the two respective atoms which are offering their electrons to form a chemical bond right so uh, this is how this theory came into being and uh, it has many postulates of its own the shape of the molecule depends upon the number of the valence shell electron pairs which can be bonded as well as they can be non bonded also around the central atom another point point of this vscpr theory says that the pairs of electrons in the valence shell they actually repel one another why because the obviously the electrons they all carry the similar charge the negative charge okay so these electrons are negatively charged so that is why the pairs of electrons in the valence shell they repel one another the third postulate and the main postulate uh, amongst all the main postulates of this theory says that these pairs of electrons they tend to occupy such positions in space so as to minimize the repulsion between them and uh, in order to minimize the repulsion between them obviously they need to move apart they need to maximize the distance between them until and unless they remain within the molecule itself so the valence shell is is taken as a sphere with the electron pairs localizing on the spherical surface at the maximum distance from one another so these are the some of the main postulates of the vscpr theory and on following these postulates various shapes of the molecules and were explained by these particular Um, points so as a result the lone pair of electrons in a molecule it occupies more space as compared to the bonded pair of electrons now this results in greater repulsion between the lone pair of electrons as compared to the lone pair bonded pair of electrons and of course as compared to the bonded pair with another bonded pair of electrons these repulsion effects they result in deviation so in this uh, picture you can see that the lone pair of electron which is represented by a blue balloon over here so the, this is the lone pair of electron which actually reside on the central atom okay so the lone pair of electron it resi uh, resides on the central atom as was just mentioned okay and these are and the bonded pair of electrons they lie in between the two respective atoms to which they are bonded so one of the atom is here and the other atom is this one so the bonded pair of electrons they lie in between them but the lone pair of electrons they are locally centralized around the central atom itself okay so now what we were talking about the 
repulsion forces we were talking about the force of repulsion obviously the force of repulsion it will affect the geometry of the molecule and as far as the uh, in decreasing order of this force is concerned we see that the lone pair lone pair shows maximum force of repulsion between them so whenever there are two lone pair of electrons around the central atom they will show they will observe maximum repulsive force between the two as compared to if there is one lone pair of electron and the other is bonded pair of electron and obviously the last priority for this uh, particular repulsive interaction will be amongst the two bonded pair of electrons so in other words the two bonded pair of electrons will show minimum repulsive forces as compared to the lone pair bond pair and of course as compared to the two lone pair of electrons okay so these repulsive effects actually they result in deviation from the idealized shapes of the molecules and of course that leads to alterations in the bond angles in the molecules so this this leads to the various uh, geometries that we observe the various shapes that we observe the various the different bond angles that we observe under different situations so this is how vacpr theory could easily explain the different shapes and the geometry of the molecules which the rest of the theories could not explain before the approach of the vacpr theory now the vacpr theory is able to actually predict the geometry of a large number of molecules especially the compounds of the p block elements accurately this is how this theory had been of great help to us